Police in near Miami are involved in a controversy tonight after shooting a suspect 23 times. That man is still alive tonight in critical condition. Authorities say the 27-year-old man was wandering the streets, waving what they thought was a gun concealed in a sock. Police negotiators tried to get him to drop it, but they say he aimed and fired at them. So far, no weapon has been found. <laughs> Also making news around America tonight, a 14-year-old Alabama girl is shot to death and her mother wounded in a church, allegedly by the estranged father and husband. One witness says the man followed the two and kicked down the door of the sanctuary, saying he didn't want them praying. Well, two would-be ATM bandits go through a lot of trouble to pull off what turned out to be an ill-fated caper. One stole a front head loader and drove it right into the glass front of a grocery store about a mile away. Once inside, authorities think he backed into a support column doing thousands of dollars in damage, but getting the ATM proved trickier than they might have thought, and the would-be burglars left empty-handed and under arrest. Fog in South Dakota leads to an accident involving a truck, a car, a school bus, and some baby pigs. Police say the semi pulled out in front of the car carrying a mother and two children and a school bus carrying the baby pigs. The car was totaled and the bus full of pigs went into a ditch. The mother and children were told were injured, no word on the condition of the pigs. The fog also stopped an air ambulance from responding. On tonight's Health Beat, federal warnings lead to a ban of the controversial Fen Fen diet pill combination. It has happened in the state of Florida where regulators say they will wait for strict prescription guidelines to be adopted. They want rules that would allow the drugs to be used only by people who are so overweight their obesity poses a greater risk than that attached to using the drugs. Fenfen has been linked, you know, to heart valve defects. Also on tonight's Health Beat, doctors at Harvard say they have proof about the healing power of prayer. They call it the prayer placebo effect. Doctors say the mind has the capability of remembering a well state in that person's life. And when we convince our minds through prayer to remember such a state, the body does what the mind tells it to do and heals itself. Here's good news for you who are afraid of a doctor's needle. Researchers at the University of Alabama are creating wipe-on vaccines. People may be able to even vaccinate themselves at home without making a special trip to the doctor's office. If the FDA approves this new method, lotion vaccines should be available in your pharmacy within five years. Most of us probably won't have any trouble following this latest health tip. Don't eat squirrel brains. For some, squirrel brains are a choice morsel, but we're now told of a possible link with the rare but deadly human variety of mad cow disease. And it apparently takes years for those symptoms to appear. Oh, no. Never had them? Don't Today think I'll be lunch. trying them. Oh, no. Oh, no. In the salad. Uh, straight ahead on the night beat tonight, Hilton will be on with another check on what could be a wet week for us. And after sports, see what's so special about a baby elephant. We'll have that for you on Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Connecticut's news station. And the night beat continues with just a hint of muggy weather in the air tonight. And... Uh, Maybe some showers before the week is over. Right now at the Channel 3 New England Weather Service in Hartford, downtown Hartford, temperature 63 degrees. Dew point up there, almost high enough to make it feel just a tad sticky outside. In Milford, 61 degree dew point, 64 degrees. The temperature and across all of Connecticut at this hour, 60 at the Torrington Country Club in Goshen, 61 degrees in Waterbury. Right now, 60 in stores, 62 at Enfield Square Mall, 64, 65 degrees in Milford, and 63 in Groton, and across all of southern New England. Our temperatures include uh, 58 degrees in Albany, 55 in Keene, 61 in Manchester, so upper 50s to the middle 60s, depending on where you are this evening. And we had plenty of summer-like weather to talk about from the southeastern part of the United States through the south central and the sun, central plains. Look at that. 97 in Dallas, 106 in Phoenix. Yep, it still is summertime. Some big thunderstorms building up uh, this evening in the central Mississippi River Valley as a weather system gathers strength and uh, prepares to move toward us. This low will bring showers and some rain to us by midweek. Here's uh, Hurricane Erica, a powerful hurricane out in the Atlantic Ocean this evening. There's Erica moving northeastward now, away from land, but look how well formed it is. Well, that eye really stands out. 125 mile an hour winds from Erica as it sweeps north and then northeastward away from the United States mainland. 
So this weather front will keep Erica away from us. Here's your forecast in detail for tonight. Look for uh, variably cloudy skies, some patchy fog around. Overnight lows 55 to 61. Clouds, some sunshine tomorrow. Temperatures in the 70s, a mostly cloudy Wednesday with some showers, 68 to 73. And the five-day planner shows rain in the forecast for Thursday. Lingering showers for Friday and partly sunny by Saturday with temperatures close to normal both tomorrow and Saturday. And the rest of the midweek period will be slightly cooler than normal. Yes, Thursday looks a little chilly. Looks a little damp, doesn't it? Yes, that it rain does. Cloud? It sure does. Thanks, Elton. Forbes magazine is out with its ranking of the 40 highest paid entertainers for 1996-97 and their estimated gross income. Number one is movie director Steven Spielberg, who was also a founder of DreamWorks Studios. Forbes says he made a cool $313 million. Following Spielberg and rounding out the top ten are George Lucas with $241 million, Oprah Winfrey with $201 million, Michael Crichton with $102 million, The Beatles still racking in $98 million, number six, Jerry Simon. Field at 94 million, followed by David Copperfield with 85 million, Stephen King with 84 million, Tom Cruise 82 million, and Arnold Schwarzenegger making 74 million dollars. Yeah, there are probably a few athletes that aren't too far away from those yes, guys. Yes, I huh? bet. <laughs> All of a sudden, NBA players don't look that bad. Don't they? <laughs> hey, we're talking tuna. We're not talking tuna salad, not grilled mahi mahi, not even yellowfin sushi. It's Bill Parcells. The big tune is coming back to New England, and the pregame hype has already started. You'll hear what the coaches have to say about the Jets and the Pets. Night Beat Sports is next. Connecticut weather can change in the blink of an eye. That's why you need the up-to-the-minute accuracy of live Doppler 3. So precise, it's a thousand times more powerful than any other Doppler in the state. When severe weather hits, every second counts. Some stations show you storm data that's more than six minutes old. We show you where the storm is now and where it's going next. When threatening weather strikes, rely on Live Doppler 3. Only on Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Connecticut's news station. Next time on Martha Stewart Living, get some hints for a well-stocked pantry. Everything's in this cupboard that I need to make my cooking quick, easy, and delicious. And make one of Martha's easy quick cooks, three garlic pasta. It's delicious. Then go outdoors to repair your antique chairs and old garden tools. If I can do it, you can do it. On the next Martha Stewart Living. Learn something new every day. Join us at 1030 on Channel 3. I've covered many an NFL game, but never ever have I seen a regular season game that is getting so much hype over one coach. Bill Parcells left the Patriots about as smooth as sandpaper, and his return this Sunday with the Jets is the most anticipated moment of the year for Pats fans. Just moments into their first press conference of the week, both coaches were asked of only one subject matter, the return of the tuna. There's a great deal of relationships that took place with with, uh, with Bill and, and, and the players in this program and, and with the Super Bowl and all the things that went along with it, there's a lot of things that could be termed distractions if we allow that to happen. So it's real important for us to deal with that. I haven't seen film on New England yet, but it looks like to me they're playing well. And what I've seen on the highlights, and it looks like they're, they've won two games very easily, so it looks like they're playing fairly well. Oh, they are. New York Giants wide receiver Ike Hilliard is expected to miss six to seven weeks due to a neck injury. It happened in yesterday's loss to Jacksonville. Hilliard rolled over, then took a right knee there. to the head. He underwent two MRIs, which revealed a sprained oh, ligament yeah. between his sixth and seventh vertebrae. Hilliard, one of the uh, top draft picks last year, seventh overall, be barely missed with a team that needs a playmaker to stretch out that defense. Two-time Indy 500 champion Emerson Fittipaldi suffered a back injury yesterday in Brazil. A Brazilian newspaper reported that Fittipaldi was piloting a lightweight plane when it crashed in San Paulo, Brazil. Emerson was taken to a nearby hospital with a fractured back. His six-year-old son was also on board. Fortunately, he was unharmed. The injuries to Fittipaldi are not believed to be life-threatening. It is one of the most wanted records in all of sports. Babe Ruth owned it. Mickey Mantle chased it. Roger Maris got it. Now Ken Griffey Jr. is closing in on hitting the most home runs in a season. Tonight he's in Kansas City and even the crowd on the road wants to see Junior break the record. How do you stop Griffey? Well, you hit him before he hits you. Griffey casually tagged. He would go homeless tonight. So here's where it stands for 50 homers, 18 games left. 
Maris, of course, the 61 in 61. Well, the Mets hosting the Phillies, tied at fours, top of the six. Aces Juice and Jason Isringhausen. The wild pitch, the go-ahead run comes in. Many more would follow Philadelphia. All over the Mets tonight at Shea. Wow, Philly's beating the Yankees. They're beating yeah, the Yankees. And they're... they were horrible at the beginning of the year. They're playing good now. They, they don't know. give up. They All don't right. give up. Thank you, Joe. And stay with us. We have the night beat newsreel coming right up for you. Well, here we are on the newsreel, and we're celebrating a blessed event in the animal world, uh, the birth of an Asian elephant, elephant at the zoo in Zurich, Switzerland, a young male named Xian, weighing in at a bouncing 163 pounds after a 22-month gestation period, Denise. 22 months. The birth was watched over by the elephant's keeper and a vet. Somehow, the birth only took seven minutes, and Xian was walking after 10 minutes. He is cute. Now, elephant breeding in zoos is difficult. We're told because of the animal size and because of the aggressive nature of elephants when they are ready to mate. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know that, but that's what it says. That's what it says. But I, and I can imagine. Yeah. And I know you can imagine. Right. You'd want to give them plenty of privacy and <laughs> plenty of room. <laughs> plenty of room. <laughs> right. All right. Well, that'll do it for Eyewitness News Certainly 19. Will. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> we thank you for sharing your time with us tonight. Have a good night. Stay up for the late show with David Letterman. See you tomorrow. Favorite Oprah moments with Brooke Shields and Winona Judd. Next Oprah.